we're living in a world where copyright affects all of our works. And so it's really important for us to just realize that we need to pay attention. And if we don't pay attention, we're going to lose opportunities. All of your works that you produce are protected by copyright. That's, that's just a given. It's an extraordinary situation where that's not true. So that's a given that they're protected by copyright. And one of the great privileges of being a copyright owner that's not in the law, but it's in fact true, one of the great privileges is that you have the opportunity to manage and make decisions about the use of that work. So what, what I'm encouraging is as you write your works, read that agreement, particularly that agreement with publishers, and be wary when it says, I transfer my copyright to you, the publisher. Be wary of that. Publishers need something, but they don't need everything. And what I'm encouraging is hold back some pieces and those pieces are pieces of rights of use that are important for you and important for your readers. Simple example, I want to be able to reuse that journal article and rework it into a chapter in a book that you might be thinking about. If you don't own the copyright, that's not your privilege anymore. I want to make copies for my colleagues, put it on my website. If you don't own the copyright, that's not your choice anymore. You can transfer the copyright, but you should in the same agreement get pieces of rights of use like that back. Let me encourage all of my colleagues, and I, and I do this constantly, to really ask those questions, to not be hesitant about negotiating. Here comes the publication agreement, and maybe it is the simple agreement that calls for a sweeping assignment of your copyright. If you start asking questions of the publisher, can I have this? Can I retain the right to do certain beneficial things? Make it available in my teaching, to be able to rework it for that book that I have in mind for next year. Publishers have been there before. You're not surprising them. They're not going to be worried about your asking questions. So I encourage you to negotiate. And negotiate from a position of really feeling confident about what you're doing. You're only asking for reasonable pieces back to you. You're asking for things that are not new to the publisher. They've been there before. In fact, they may even have some language that they offer up. And they'll only offer it when you ask. And also keep in mind that as eager as you are to have this publication opportunity, the publisher is eager to have you too. So always negotiate from a position of feeling confident you're not going to lose this deal. Is that possible? Of course it's possible. But so far in our experience, it's, it, it's just simply not happening. The worst that we've seen happen as a result of an author negotiating or asking for certain benefits in the, in the language of the contract is the publisher says, no, we have our standard form. I, I wish a publisher wouldn't say that, but if the publisher says that, it really is just going to come back to you to decide how badly do I want this deal and am I willing to sign this or explore my other alternatives. I really want to close with one important bit of advice. Whatever you sign, whatever your agreement is, keep a copy. Put it in your long-term permanent file. Because I get questions about the use of somebody's research article from the past, and it might be the recent past, it might be the deep distant past. And very typically, the very first question that we need an answer to is, what did the agreement say? What did this author give to the publisher or what did this author retain? And we need the answer to that and it's the agreement that's going to give us that answer. So whatever you sign, keep a copy and put it in your permanent files.